is Saturday evening, Saturday night. Yeah, it's just nearing 10 o'clock. I think I'm the only one in the yard tonight. And there's only, what, two of us working tomorrow on Sunday. Because uh, unlike most of Europe, the UK never stops, never has days off. Bank holidays, Sundays, nights. Nothing stops the UK. We run all day, every day, as and when. So I've come in tonight, uh, mostly because it means that I can sleep in until 5.30 in the morning. Otherwise I'd have to get up at about 4am. Uh, just finished packing all my gear, uh, get my bed sorted, and then I will see you in the morning. Morning! Oh, it's too early to be this cheerful, really. Especially now that winter's coming. It's dark in the mornings, dark in the evenings. Oh. But uh, uh, what I didn't say or forgot to say is that, uh, yes, there's two of us on this morning, but we are on separate jobs. So I think the other guy, who I heard just leave a bit earlier, just before I got up, uh, possibly going to London. But I am going to Scotland. Last time I went to Scotland was up the A1 towards Edinburgh, or just the yeah, outskirts, just outside Edinburgh even. Uh, this time, M6, A74M, and into Glasgow proper. Uh, but that'll be tomorrow morning. Plan for today, uh, set off here, six o'clock, head up towards Rugeley, uh, and collect some stuff there, nip across to Telford, pick up a bit more stuff there, and then hoon it up to uh, towards Glasgow. I hope, uh, assuming I have time and there is room, to get into a 74 truck stop because that's the last one on the motorway before Glasgow. Then tomorrow morning, push on the last little bit for a nine o'clock delivery to the SEC in Glasgow because uh, next week, for onwards, it was about a week or so, I believe. Uh, it's, what was it, COP26, and so we're delivering a load of stuff for that. Uh, for doing presentations and bits and bobs and stuff like that. So, what was it now? Quarter to six. Ah, oh, it is. Time to clock on. And then uh, do my checks, and we'll get going. Everything's sorted, all good to go. Just got to pull out of this little gap now. Squeeze out. There we go, clear. Cool. And yeah, no trains. I don't know why with that crossing, but once it closes, it stays closed for ages and ages and ages. Even if like, it'll easily stay closed for ten minutes, a lot of the time. This is the main road, um, and then yeah, head up towards Birmingham on the N40. Coming, surprise, surprise, this time of the morning on a Sunday. Uh, M42, and then you've got a couple of options. You can either turn off at junction 10 and head up the 446, or is it, or 448, towards Litchfield, or carry on up towards Tamworth and then go towards Litchfield on the A5, which is dual carriageway and faster, but it's a slightly longer route. See how I feel once I get there. How's that looking? It's a bit more lighter now. Don't know if the sun is up quite yet. It's not far off. Unless it's behind the trees. But this is the M42. We're at Birmingham. And given the lack of traffic, certainly going northbound anyway, uh, I will probably take the shorter but more windy route off of Junction 10. Uh, even though it's a single carriageway there's just no traffic around so it's not going to slow me down that much. The 
this is the junction we want. It's actually number nine, not ten. I don't know, unless it's a two-part junction, but yeah, the 446 is where we're going. And then if you want to stay toll-free, the next two lanes is the M42 slash A42, which eventually takes you up to the M1. We stay on the outside lanes and you'll get put onto the M6 toll. But for now, stick to the left lane, take the second exit, I do believe, for the 446 towards Litchfield. Make our way through Litchfield and then uh, should get to signs for, uh, was it, Rugeley. I think this is what we want. We turn towards the low bridge and then it should get higher. <clears throat> so I was looking on Google yesterday and that sign says it's 4.1 metres or something like that, 13 foot 9. And then you get down to the bridge, and it turns out it's 4.2 metres, 14 foot or something. Uh, 4.2... Oh no, they've changed the sign. It says the same thing now. Yeah, on Google, that says it's 4.3 metres. So they've changed the sign at some point since then. Unit 42 is right up at the far end. Okay. I don't have the number for the gate. Oh Automatic gates close at 6 pm. 2 pm on Saturday, so I assume that they're closed all day Sunday. No intercom. Uh, and I don't really fancy leaving the truck abandoned in the middle of the road whilst I walk all the way up to the other end of the uh, industrial estate. So what I'll do instead, I'll Google the company and uh, give them a phone call. Let's try that number. Try the London office. No, yep. answer machine. Hmm. So my choices are either ring the emergency contact number or walk up and see if there's anyone there. Hi there. Uh, Paragon. Paragon. There's yeah. no one open on a Sunday. Uh, well the Sunday. The gates on here don't open until half past five on Monday morning. Oh, okay. Was there no even uh, a code to put in to get into the There is a code to put in, but I don't think there'll be anyone there. Well, they're supposed to be expecting a collection at nine o'clock, so unless they've come in specially. Uh. <laughs> Have you got a number for him or? Uh, I've got like an emergency contact number, but yeah, I've tried their office numbers and they're not answering. <laughs> there's like nobody on here, there's nobody open on the Sunday. Uh, okay. Try the mobile number. Uh, hi there, it's FCL. I'm supposed to be collecting from the Rugeley um, depot at nine o'clock. Uh, do you know if there's anyone on site or like what the code for the gate is? If the guys aren't, aren't here, then they should be on their way. Someone's just pulling in behind me. So it must be the guys. The, that shut door's open slightly as well. We'll move over and let them pass. Uh, do you want me in front of this door here, yeah? Okay. 
Cool. Is there room to do it the lazy way? I think it was that door. I make life difficult reversing on an extreme angle when you can come at it from pretty much head on. Follow the guy's instructions. And there we go. First place, five to nine, perfect. Oh, not in gear, there we go. Find the gear. There it is. Well, that took a bit longer than expected. It was that hour and three quarters? Uh, so I should have a 15 minutes before I go anywhere. Uh, yes, that's that's been quite an interesting load because uh, I'm supposed to be picking up a second lot from Telford. Uh, we chucked some of the stuff on there and it's like, oh, well, this ain't gonna fit. So I triple stacked some of the boxes and started single stacking the rest and then it's like, oh, it's still not gonna fit. Um, so double stacked a load more, squidged everything in, tessellated stuff around to try and uh, make as much room as possible. And even then, it only just fit. I've got a tiny little bit on the left and a little thin sliver down the side of the trailer uh, and that's about it so hopefully uh, this second place in Telford uh, doesn't have a huge amount of gear because there ain't much space but it's their fault because they've ordered this truck uh, apparently they've sub hired all this gear and ordered the truck and they said they only needed one so it's their problem if it's not enough. Now through town, down towards Cannock, follow the M6 toll over the M6, M54, and into Telford. gates already open. If we can go straight over at this roundabout it would be nice but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a seven and a half ton. Uh, I can't see nothing. Bit of a change of incline there. Could have been getting close to the old uh, trailer in the catwalk. So jack the suspension up. Made our way out to the edge of town. There's a sign for Canuck. So come out and now we're going to go back in again. But on the other side of town to skip out to the weight limit through the centre. This is Telford. We're just going to make our way around the outskirts of town uh, and find this other place. So in theory, oh, there's a map, perfect. Let's have a little gander at the map and see if we can find what we're looking for. Name 
name I'm looking for is not on there, okay. Hmm. Proto Labs, no, not looking for that. Abandoned, White and Company, no. XPO, no. Precast concrete, no. Hmm. Oh, name I'm looking for isn't showing up anywhere, unless that's it over there. truck in a bit of a pain place because it's technically a turning round area not a parking area I don't know if there's enough space for me to get back Massive AV, oh, that's the company we're looking for, cool. Just got to turn around here now. Come in on me good side. That's a bit of a ramp to reverse up. Hmm. It's the only place that looks open. And there's flight cases in there. So we'll get ourselves set up. Jack the suspension up because we've got to reverse up a bit of an incline. So that uh, the trailer doesn't hit the catwalk. And then see if it fits. Just see how much space I've got on the catwalk. Not much, but there's just a little bit of a uh, little bit of a gap still. The tractor unit's almost starting to go up the ramp now, so it should be alright. If you hear a crunch, you know what's happened. us on the bait, we'll see what they say. Uh, how much drive time I've got left? 42. Might have lunch here, might not. There's not much traffic here, it's a dead end road so I can get away parking here for half hour. Uh, phone, I want you. Gloves, I want you. Uh, and we'll see, see how much stuff there is to try and get on this truck now. <laughs> this could be interesting. It's lunchtime. Uh, I'll park up and have a break. Unsurprisingly, it didn't fit on. So either I'm going to have to get tipped and come back tomorrow, or maybe another guy can uh, get it done just in time. Suspension is up. Cool. Drop off the curb nice and gently. But uh, yeah, not enough room. Um, I mean technically there was if you double stacked everything but they don't have a forklift and uh, 
the boxes from the other place are not super duper strong so I don't want to risk damaging someone else's property uh, where can we park up on the right here this will do that will do suspension down stick you on brake What do I need to do? Have lunch, have break, and mark this A74 truck stop on my map because I have forgot to do that so far. Um, but yeah, break's done, half an hour has ticked past, got a nice fresh driving time. It's about five hours to route 74 truck stop. Whether I'll stop there, I'm in two minds now. It's looking like a bit of a faff about in the morning. It's going to be a lot longer than I was expecting in the morning. I was expecting just a nice little uh, 30 minute drive into the SEC, but apparently not. I'm going to have to drive all the way out to uh, the marshalling area, then spend time checking in to then drive back to Glasgow for my nine o'clock delivery slot. So instead of getting up at like 8 o'clock to be there for 9, it's now looking like 6 o'clock. Um, and given that it's 20 to 2 now, it's going to take me at least 6 hours, including another break, to get up there. Um, yeah. So it's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 10 hours, it's going to be a reduced rest by the looks of it. Nice and easy, follow signs from 54 and then M6 North. And then that's it, we just sit there all day for the rest of the day. Back on the 460, and I did see a truck fuel stop on the way down here. So I'm thinking that uh, I might stop here fill up with fuel because regardless of what job I do tomorrow and the day after uh, it's going to be a lot of driving involved so take the time now rather than rushing around doing it tomorrow or Wednesday uh, so yeah, it's that trailer it was parked there so the fuel station is somewhere on the right where is it but Okay, cool. There's 24. That's AS24. The whole thing's branded as AS24. Diesel and a blue, red diesel, add blue, normal diesel. Fuel sorted for today and tomorrow, at, very, uh, at the very least. Take a grass working on the old dashboard now. 4 hours and 23 minutes of driving so far today, I've got 3 hours and 57 minutes left of this stint. So let's see how far that gets us up the road. Uh, let's 
about it really. Drive, drive and keep driving. And there we go. Sit here all day. The only time it changes is when you cross the Scottish border, but you don't even have to do anything, it just it just changes, the signs change, that's it. No changing roads, no changing lanes. Traffic's been pretty heavy. Pretty much constant the whole time. It's eased off and we've been at full speed for a little bit. Um, but now it's picked back up again and we've slowed down. Not too far from Manchester and Liverpool though. So, fingers crossed, it should ease off at about 10, 15, 20 miles. Just seen the first sign for Carlisle, 83 miles. So what's that, 1 hour, 1 hour 20, 1 hour 30. So I'll be looking to have a break somewhere around the Scottish border. Not far from Carlisle, I'm going to stop at these services. I've only got 25 minutes of driving left. I'm just shy of 8 hours. So I've got 2... Two hours, yeah. Two hours to get to uh, Glasgow, or more specifically Route 74 truck stop. This is the last services before Scotland. Southwick services. Get past Carlisle and then, was it Gretna? I think it's just the other side of the border, Gretna. A little bit busy, even for a Sunday. T. Allen Johns Limited. Those both overtook me a while ago. Uh, that's a through path. Another parking spot. That's a through path. I will stop in this bit here. And there's the entrance to the surfaces over there. Cool. And yeah, I've got about two hours after this to do at least an hour, probably more like an hour and a half. So it's going to be a little bit tight getting towards um, truck stop tonight. But uh, yeah, we kind of have to make it, otherwise I'm going to have to get up super early to make it to this marshalling yard in the morning. Break is over. I have checked and it's about an hour and a half. To, uh, the truck stop and I've got two hours of driving it also turns out I've got two hours of duty time left how convenient Junction at the M6, Junction 45, and up in front is a very familiar looking cross. At least the sign's nice and reflective, you can't miss it. But there we go. Over the bridge into Scotland. Junction 22 of the AE74M. And it starts counting down, so it counts up from the M6 to the border, and then the border to Glasgow counts back down again. 74 truck stop, mile and a half that sign says. And we're just about going to squeak in, in time. 34 minutes of drive time remaining, 40 minutes of duty time remaining. Just about squeezing nine hours in and then be ready to set off tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. This way. This looks more like the entrance to Tesco's, but oh well. Apparently not. Welcome, Route 
Route 74 truck stop. And the ago, or whatever it was, I didn't get to see it in time. Evening. Uh, just the one night, yeah. Uh, about six o'clock. See this guy coming round? Yeah. I think he's going in there. Okay. I'm so I couldn't understand about what they were saying. <laughs> okay. You can maybe even get in next to him. Okay. Depending on how he parks us. <laughs> how he parks him. Uh, not the best. <laughs> That's why I feel my drive. He's not at all lined up with parking spaces, about another two widths over. It's quite a fancy truck stop this. See where this guy puts us. That one there. Yeah. You may get in behind that. Oh, around the other I side. Yeah. In a big circle. Yeah. You just drive nose in behind this one. Nose in. Yeah. What time's he leaving? Or? Sure. Okay. Well, I can just reverse that if I need to. Yeah. We go court past eight clock off entry driver one end country UK 441.9 miles. Uh, I'll have to have a little wander around, see where these toilets and shower facilities and uh, dining amenities are. Well, I don't know about you. But I'm going to have a quick wander around, see where everything is, and then probably go to bed fairly quickly. Because I am quite tired. Good morning. Just looking up the route to this marshalling area. It's quite a way out the way. But at least it's all main road, so it shouldn't take a huge amount of time to get there. Um, but yeah, checks are all done. Surveyed the situation. We've got a bit of a gap off to the right. That car transport is still there to the left. So I'm not quite sure whether to try and reverse out. Probably can't with that uh, Jack Richards and Sun truck behind me. So it might just have to be reverse back through this gap and then uh, round the block again. Whatever requires the least amount of effort. Yuck. Quarter past six, it's our old daily checks done. That guy's going, so the gap's going to be even bigger. So I might be lazy and go through it. So we're we'll trying to reverse around the corner, especially with that car transport over. And then having to get lined up with the fuel pumps as well. 
means a bit more driving because I have to go all the way around the block again. It just makes life easier. It's very nice this place. Shop, restaurant, good showers, toilets, in a proper building, not a port -a -loo. parking for loads of trucks, fuel pumps on site, truck wash on site. It'd be lovely if all other truck stops were like that, but uh, yeah, the quality is uh, lacking sometimes at uh, a few of these places. You've even got a supermarket right opposite if you need food at a reasonable price instead of paying motorway service prices. M74, push on the last little bit, and away we go. Ah, it's a beautiful Scottish day once again. Very close to the M8. So follow signs of Glasgow Airport, because that's where I want to go past. I think this is the right name. As expected, Half an hour later, we are in Glasgow. Specifically, the SEC, it should be just right in front of us, but I don't know if we'll be able to see it right uh, in the dark. But it is literally in front of us somewhere there. Uh, I think I can see one of the buildings. There we go. Yeah, there it is. I can see it, it's just over there, but we can't go to it just yet go all the way out of Glasgow again into the countryside to the marshalling yard. Now it feels like there's a bit of irony going on here. You've got this big meeting about climate change and making a difference. But to make deliveries to it, you have to practically drive past the front door, half an hour off out into the middle of nowhere, to pick up what basically amounts to a ticket that says, yeah, you can go on site, and then drive all the way back again. It's quite crazy, really, and somewhat hilarious. Almost here, in theory, this is where the old uh, address pointed to. Uh, Expo, yeah, this must be us then. Nearly three quarters of an hour later. A random bit of waste ground that sits here until they need it, by the looks of it. It's kind of hard to see much apart from the road. You get blinded by all these lights. Plants and bits in the way. Anyway, this ain't much better. So there doesn't seem to be much here, apart from one little port or cabin. Uh, and that's it, I think. And there's no lights on. I'll go have a wander over and see what's happening. Well, I've got my vehicle pass, but I'm not going to be there for 9 o'clock, as it's currently 10 to 9. Uh, struggling to find a booking. Uh, so either someone's done it and we don't know what the reference number is or the name, or someone thought they did it and they haven't. So 
but yeah, any which way, I now have to wait until uh, a booking slot becomes available. Uh, so it's looking like the other guy might be beating me to Telford to pick up the rest of this load. Still waiting, not much progress happening. Uh, it's nearly 10 o'clock now. Supposedly, it's to do with like, a log jam on site. There's lots of police searches when you have to get in through the gate. But there ain't much else we can do, just got to sit and wait. Uh, I have been called. Hooray, 11.30. We'll cross over at this nice bit instead of over the plants in case my wheels get stuck and I end up just wheel spinning. But this guy's got a fancy map and he's going to show me where I need to go. Uh, and then we'll work out what happens from there. It sounds like the police are going to do quite a thorough search of the truck. So we'll find out what happens. Uh, right, so we can't go the way that I was thinking because the police have apparently blocked off the access from the M8. So I have to go the back country road away, which is down that way. Okay. Cool. Right. <laughs> They're piles of dirt to run over, cool. Well, at least we get to see what this looks like in the daytime. I wonder what it used to be. That's a car park there. That looks foundations for something in a car park, possibly there. Busted washing machine, lots of fly tip gear. Yeah, bit of a strange setup, this. Something used to be here, but it's just. Yeah abandoned at some point. So the yellow car was kind enough to move over, but the red car didn't do it until the very end, which was a bit too late by then. But it doesn't matter because I need to cross over both lanes to get the trailer out around the corner. But thank you anyway. So down here, because we can only turn left, chuck a Yui at the roundabout, head back over the Erskine Bridge, which I'm wondering if that's the same Erskine as uh, the Erskine Parliamentary Rules book. Could be, I don't know. Uh, and then you go some back roads way into the SEC, because you can't come off at uh, the M8 junction. What river's that? Is that the Clyde, possibly? Don't know. Uh, but yes, I'm this side, and I need to be that side of it. And there is a bridge, there's also the Clyde Tunnel. Uh, there is a weak bridge leading up to the tunnel. And not knowing the geography very well, it's probably not the best idea to try and work that one out. Uh, and the guy at the Marshall Yard recommended using the bridge anyway. So I will use that. Not bad views, fairly alright. You can see Glasgow off in the distance over there. So that road there is closed. open. There's three police cars. In theory, because I'm now on the right road, it should just be straight down here and then it leads into the SEC. Cop 26 Authorised vehicles only, I'm going to imagine that's me. Now the sun's finally put in an appearance. Break out the old uh, sunglasses. So you go down the wrong side of the carriageway, but on the left hand lane.
Okay, so so that one. one yeah, okay. on the left side, okay. Third turning on the right. Thanks. Straight. Straight, yep. So that's one, I'm going to assume. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, get up. That's like 25th, yeah. Uh, Did you get a pass? Yeah, I've yeah. got Where a... Going? Yeah. Uh, hall 4, so like third turning on the right. There, we're separate companies here. Yeah. Okay, thanks. See ya. Uh, we're separate. Yeah, we've got a whole four of it. Is that three you're down at once, right? Uh, I assume so, yeah. Uh, just take it easy, I'm going to walk you through here. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okie doke, thanks. Yeah. Reverse back that way, okay. Right there, yeah. Right, the fence behind that curtain. Behind the curtain, yeah, okay.
Oh dear me, right. Hopefully, that's it. I'm surprised no one said anything about the cameras, but uh, that's as finely tipped. It was lovely weather until that five minutes ago, but uh, well, luckily it was just the uh, very last case to come off. I believe the exit. is the same way that I came in. Usually the easiest way out would be to head back that way, but that road's closed. And the M8 from that direction, you can't actually get onto the M74, it's a bit of a weird layout. So I'm better off uh, if I go pretty much all the way back that I came from, through the Clyde Tunnel, trying to avoid the weight limit, wherever that is, for the weight, uh, weak bridge. And then... Yeah, try and turn left onto the M8 and head south, basically. Back onto the wrong side of the road. Let's see how far we have to go before we can... Uh, turn right here or not. Mm -hmm. Don't know, it might be easy just to carry on going all the way straight. Uh, we have no choice but to turn right. Okie doke, cool. I haven't given this much room. left where that white car just went and that should take us back to the Clyde Tunnel. I'll get my own lane, I do. Cool. Go over 15 foot, not a problem. This bridge here is the weak bridge. Okay. Strange that it's not strong enough for um, trucks to go over it because it looks fairly substantial. Uh, but then again, that pillar looks like it's quite badly corroded and there's some rebar showing. Maybe it used to be strong enough. Okay. Literally, the other side of that bridge is the M8. That's a bit annoying, literally 50 yards from the M8 and you can't use it. Down that way, okay. 
Very strange junction layout, but it works. services. And then uh, I can finish the rest of my lunch off. And I'll probably uh, restart the video and do a part two. Because there will be plenty enough to, uh, to do a second video by the time I've gone all the way down and back. next to this van minute whilst we're as well I'm gonna call time on this video so I will see you next time in the exact same place as now so until next time see you then